Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel. I may have beat the Homeowners Association or the HOA, but in order to truly know that I beat them, I need to do a few things, and there'll be an episode here in a few weeks. The first thing I need to do is purchase coax, coaxial cable, and I have a very specific set of needs. So with that, I would like to walk you through my thought process on purchasing coaxial cable. Maybe it'll help you as an amateur radio operator in the future. Let's get started. So to beat the HOA, I have a set of requirements. And the first thing that I kind of want to just hint toward is I want to know the outer diameter of a piece of coaxial TV cable or RG59 or RG6. I pull up uh, this chart here from Google and I see that it's somewhere around a quarter inch, you know, give or take. And that's going to help me because now I, I need as a requirement that I'll need my coaxial cable to be at a maximum of a quarter inch or just around a quarter inch in outer diameter. Now, you might ask, well, why don't you just use coaxial cable from the television? And because I need 50 ohms of impedance value, whereas typical RG59, RG6 or television coaxial cable is somewhere around 75 ohms. Next up, I want to get an idea or a recommendation on what cable has the minimal amount of losses. So for that, there's two things I could do. I could pull up a loss chart, which I'll show you here in just a second. Additionally, I can go to cableexperts.com and they have just a little bit of a cable calculator guide, if you will. So with that, here is the cable calculator guide. And there's a couple of things that are going to be asked. Let's go through it. The length of my cable run is under 100 feet. In fact, I think I'm going to be right around 50 feet of a cable run. The operating frequency is, for me, it's going to be 144 megahertz or the two meter band. With this, the power range, currently I only have a five, no, I'm sorry, a 10 watt uh, radio, the ICOM IC705. However, in the future, I might upgrade to another radio that has maybe 100 watts. So to be safe, I'm actually bumping it up to less than 251 watts. Again, we talk about this impedance value, 50 ohms, and then the antenna system type, and in my situation, that's going to be a stationary vertical antenna. The thing about two meters is it's capable as SSTV. So anyway, I'm going to calculate this with the connectors installed. And the reason I'm going to do that is there's going to be connectors installed to my coaxial cable eventually. So we might as well just uh, calculate it now. And we're going to get an idea from the loss chart by clicking the calculate button. And when I click calculate, I'm recommended three different types of coaxial cable, RG213U, RG214U, and RG142U. So let's go ahead and look up the spec sheets on that. I'm going to get rid of this TV to make it a little bit bigger and easier to read. And even though I have some notes, I'm kind of thinking of things along the way that I also need. And so in my notes, I didn't mention that I'm going to need this cable to be outdoor cable. You need to consider the same thing. Is this going to be outdoor cable that is exposed to the sun or UV rays? Is this going to be cable that needs to be buried? And those are the things that you're going to want to know. In my situation, this is going to be a cable that runs along a house and it's going to be exposed to sun. So I'm going to want this rated for outdoor use with UV protection. Now, with all that even, I, I also thought about color of the coaxial cable. Now, black would be fine. It's going to blend in with the neighbors and their coaxial cable runs for their dish networks. But to remain super concealed, it would be nice to find some white coaxial cable. I just don't know if I'm going to find any white coaxial cable that's ultraviolet ray outdoor protected. And another thing that we might consider, but I'm not going to, is going to be the cost of the coaxial cable. Do you have a budget? How much are you willing to spend on the coaxial cable? And if you can't, get the coaxial cable you want for that budget, what are you willing to sacrifice? I'll go ahead and link this in the comments below so you can kind of use the calculator and search and see what Cable Experts has to offer. But the problem that you're going to see here is RG213U has an outer diameter of 0.405 inches, which basically means that it's almost a half of an inch outer diameter, more than a quarter of what I need. And you're thinking, hey, a quarter inch isn't a huge deal. A quarter inch is a huge deal. I've doubled the size of my coaxial cable, making it more obvious for what I want to do. If this is the solution that I'm going to use, or if this is the smallest cable I can find that's going to be efficient for VHF, then so be it. I'll use some of this uh, RG8U. However, I feel like there might be a better option, and I'm going to continue to run through that. In the description below, I'll link this chart from rfelectronic.se. 
And this is a great chart to be able to, to visually compare different types of coax. Before I used the calculator and it said, hey, this is what you need, RG214 or RG213 right here. Well, again, if we look at the outer diameter, it's about 0.405 inches in outer diameter. And we're going to use 150 megahertz as a reference. So what this is saying is at 150 megahertz per every 100 feet, we have 2.8 dB of loss. Now, if we look at LMR 240, which is uh, 0.24 inches or right there almost at the quarter inch mark, uh, we have 3.0 dB of loss. So the, the, the loss between at 100 feet, of course, now we're using 50, so you can divide that in half, and it's really not nominal. Uh, we're looking at 0.2 dB uh, per 100 feet of loss, or probably 0.1 dB at 50 feet. So realistically, I could use LMR240, and I think I'd be fine. I'm going to stay away from Belden RG8X. Look at the loss on there. Now... Uh, that, that's pretty significant uh, of a difference if you ask me. So for, for just about the same diameter, we're going we're gonna to stick with the LMR240. The RG213 would be nice, uh, but I just don't think I can get away with that larger diameter size. I wanted to show you an example of the output power lost via the coaxial cable, and we're going to compare the three different types of cables, and surprisingly, there's not much of a difference, but let's walk through them here, and, and I'll explain things as I go along. So for all the examples, I used 50 feet of length and line, the frequency being 146.520, and I'm assuming we have perfect standing wave ratio, and the power in is going to be 70 watts. Now I chose 70 watts because there's quite a few radios on the market you could purchase that have 60 or 70 watts of output power and they're just little mobile radios but you could use them in your base or, or at your house as well. Starting with the RG213 and the scenario that I just mentioned, we're looking at an output power of 51.799 watts and that's assuming that everything is absolutely perfect on your standing wave ratio. And you're looking at a total loss of 1.3 dB, which is, is very minimal. I mean, you're not even looking at an S unit by any means. I'm going to jump over here real quick, the LMR240. And at 70 watts, 49.643 watts, 1.4 dB. So the difference between the RG213, which was recommended, and the LMR240 is going to be about... 0.1 dB loss. I could deal with that. And with that also being said, let me show you something here real quick. If I were to go over here to the Tandy RG8X at 50 feet, I'd be at 2.119 dB loss, and I'd only have about 42 watts out. Still not even an S unit difference. However, I do want to just kind of really quickly go back to the LMR 240 because I think that's what I'm ultimately going to use. And let's do some comparisons now, assuming our standing wave ratio wasn't necessarily perfect. Let's just say, for whatever reason, your standing wave ratio is maybe 2 to 1, and I'm assuming you have 50 ohms impedance still, so you're resonant at 146.520 with a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio. Well, here's what I'm here to show you. Let's, let's go up to 2 to 1, and it's okay to operate your radio with a 2 to 1 standing wave ratio. But remember, we're at 49.643 watts at a 1 to 1. And at a 2 to 1, we go to 46.739 watts, which is still 94% efficiency. Uh, and I just want to jump over the coax calculator here. If we used RG8X with a 1 to 1, we'd be at 42 watts. So uh, we're still being more efficient than the RG8X at 2 to 1 standing wave ratio with the LMR 240. Uh, but I did want to show you just in that chart that even if you have a two to one standing wave ratio, you're still 94% efficient. And I'm going off of 94% efficiency based on the cable length and the one to one standing wave ratio. So in a perfect world on LMR 240, you're only getting 49.643 of your 70 watts out. That's where my baseline is to calculate the efficiency. I pulled this chart up one more time, and I want to walk through a couple more things. Now, there's a, a expression that goes, proper planning prevents piss-poor performance, or the five Ps, a lot of P. The reason I mention that is 
I'm talking about two meter here. This is what I'm going to do for two meters, two meters, two meters. And in my mind, I don't think I'm ever going to use 70 centimeters or UHF. But then I recognize, yeah, that's a possibility. Maybe one day I'll need to use UHF here or I'll want to use UHF. And all of a sudden I won't have the capability to use UHF because I picked the wrong cable. So for the future, I am planning on finding the cable that's going to maybe even work good if I decide to go UHF. Heck, the IC705 has UHF on it. Why wouldn't I use that now, right? Here we are, uh, RG213 or 214, which was recommended by cable experts. That's at 5.2 dB of loss at 450 megahertz. And LMR240 is so minimal, it's at 5.3 dB. Now, again, I'm going to avoid belt in RG8X because it's at 8.6 dB loss at 100 feet. So let's go ahead and see if we can find any LMR240 on Cable Experts website. And if not, where can we find LMR240 and what LMR240 are we going to buy? And if you're wondering why I'm pumping up Cable Experts, it's not because I'm sponsored or anything like that. In fact, they haven't returned my emails to be on my show. But I am supporting Cable Experts because A, it's good quality cable that I enjoy. But B, they're also a local company and I try to support local companies when I can. And on Cable Experts' website, there is two types of coaxial cable. There's the LMR240 UF and the LMR240, and we'll call it the Andrews. So the UF and the Andrews. As I go through all this stuff and I take a look at the difference in, in these cables, I don't see any significant difference between the cables, with the exception of if I'm starting to get 1,000 feet of the cable, I'm going to have a little more loss with the LMR240 UF. So with that being said, I don't notice any other difference and I'm sitting here staring at things. But one thing I did just notice that I want to point out is if we look at the maximum temperature. Now I'm in an area where it doesn't get to negative 40 C is also negative 40 F or Fahrenheit. I'm in an area where it's typically doesn't get that cold. So I don't think I have anything to worry about there. Um, so I could probably just go with either type of cable. Now, one thing I notice is uh, cable features, and they actually say it's weatherproof, but they have ready-made assemblies. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see if we can find some ready-made 240. So there was no LMR 240 with connectors already uh, attached to it at the end. And that's actually fine if I think about it a little further because I'm going to actually have to run this through a, a wall. And to do that, I'm going to need to cut one end anyway. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. This was my thought process and how I chose what coaxial cable was going to be the best for the circumstances I had. I do hope that this video found you well. I hope it helped you out. Um, and if you're going to be a guy like this, actually like this right here, who just decides to call us a bunch of idiots or something like that, but doesn't give any information or useful knowledge, you're the one who's killing the hobby. I'm going to leave you with that. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Until next time, 73. But yet done. See, this list right here is a list of 23 individuals who every month they pay me a membership status or a supporter status. And I give them a shout out during my episodes and I thank them. Every episode, I try to give a different way or a unique perspective of explaining why I am so grateful that these people are supporting me. Today, I want to put it like this. These 23 people right here, they don't always agree with what my opinion is on a product or that this radio is the latest, greatest radio as opposed to this radio. But what they see in my channel is integrity. They see that I'm giving a truthful opinion or demonstration of a product and I'm not selling out. With that being said, I give respect to these people for believing and trusting in me. And I'm going to do everything in my abilities to continue to do exactly what I just mentioned. Be honest in my reviews and my products, because that's how we're going to build a subscriber base together. Whether you're a member and you're supporting me or you're subscribed and you're supporting me. I thank you guys very much. But this list here of my members, Michael Satterfield, excuse me, Lee, Patrick, Lionel, Shaq and Greg, Plasma Storm 73, Gary O, W Kirby, Ken Copper, W4, O, R, H, uh, I said that one right, too. I almost said zero RH. Good game. Ham Radio. Vern. WW8VS. The Gaming Ham. Ham World Online. Christiana Vergona. James Linden. Dan. M0IDW. Jason. N3YAZ. Andy Colley. Steve. KO4AFL. And there is one more. 
big out shout out to Mike Stanick as a lifetime member with a significant donation. I appreciate you. That, ladies and gentlemen, is it. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thank you for trusting in me, 73.